More than any other major professional sports league, the NBA is almost always targeted by conspiracies. Most of these conspiracies usually end up baseless and without concrete evidence. However, over the years, many stories and theories have appeared to be exposing the truth behind the NBA and its involvement in these schemes. Today, I take a closer look into these conspiracies. Welcome to NBA Insider. Following the 2016 NBA playoffs, many critics believe that the NBA has been doing things in their favor. You all are probably already aware of Steph Curry's wife, Aisha Curry, and her outrage towards the league because she herself is one of these critics. She had a lot to say about the NBA being rigged on Twitter. Unfortunately for the league, despite their disregard for her kind words, they can't escape talks that it's involved in fixing things. Even Bill Simmons, one of the most popular media figures in the NBA, has publicly talked about a couple conspiracy theories himself. The idea behind these theories is simple. When you peel back the layers to almost every ridiculous NBA conspiracy theory, you're left with one assumption. All the NBA wants is more money. The bigger conspiracy here, however, is that the NBA mainly plans outcomes for major games to make more money through TV ratings. And what leads to higher TV ratings? Star players, big market teams, and dramatic game seven. So how does the NBA pull this off? A few ways according to conspiracy theorists. Before I begin, I would like to inform you guys that I am not in favor of the thought that the NBA is rigged, but I do believe sometimes things do look a little bit suspicious. I'm just saying this so later on I don't get comments saying things like, you're just a Golden State fan. So, with that being said, Wait! What do you want? Aren't you gonna talk about how the NBA is rigged? Yeah, that's just what I said I was gonna do before you rudely interrupted me. Oh, I'm so sorry, my fault. I just wanted to make sure everyone knows the NBA is rigged. Help me! Help me! Nigga! Don't worry, he said he's gonna talk about it. <laughs> Okay. Anyways, like I was saying, here's three stories that prove the NBA is rigged. Now the first of many debates on this topic matter is the NBA's involvement in rigged drafts. The draft has been a source of conspiracy for the NBA for many years. The 1985 draft, the first to use a lottery to determine which team got the number one pick, is the most notorious. Conspiracy theorists think the NBA rigged the lottery in order to send Patrick Ewing to the struggling New York Knicks. It's always good business for the NBA when the team in the biggest TV market ends up with the best player. So sometimes they gotta look out for those teams. The incident of the 19 85 draft lottery has been focused on so much because it shows potential evidence of NBA officials favoring the New York Knicks. First, the accountant dropped some envelopes cleanly into the lottery ball, except one that gets banged around the rim, creasing its corner. An accident, right? While well, NBA commissioner David Stern just happens to pick up an envelope with a creased corner after feeling around in there for a little too long. And of course, that envelope just happens to contain the logo of the New York Knicks, allowing them to get the first draft pick. As a result, the Knicks walk away with future Hall of Famer Patrick Ewing, and soon New Yorkers have a reason to watch basketball on TV again. Everyone wins, except the other teams of course. It's important to know that there was no other evidence outside of this allegedly creased paper. As you can see, it's a pretty weak theory, but a lot of people believe it. Ever since that incident, draft conspiracy theories now pop up almost every year. Whenever there's attention around a team and a potential number one pick, people say that the lottery was rigged. Some example in recent years include the 2003 draft where the Cavaliers got the number one pick and Akron native LeBron James, the 2008 draft where the Bulls got the number one pick and Chicago native Derrick Rose, the 2000 11 draft where the Cavaliers got the number one pick Kyrie Irving one year after LeBron left and the 2012 draft where the New Orleans Hornets got the number one pick Anthony Davis. In the case of the 2012 draft, an old photo of Davis wearing a Hornets hat two weeks before the draft surfaced as alleged evidence of the conspiracy. All these draft theories were usually shot down by many fans, players, and the NBA themselves. But the NBA isn't doing a good job of hiding their intentions if they really are fixing things. This year, Hall of Famer Dikembe Mutombo tweeted and congratulated the 76ers on their NBA draft lottery win, hours before the allegedly live and unpredictable draw took place. Sure enough, the Sixers did go on to win the draft lottery and now have the number one pick. On the one hand, the Sixers and Matumbo each explained that his tweet was an accident and not an example of Matumbo's knowledge of a predetermined result. On the other hand, isn't that exactly what they would say? There's just too many questions. How could Matumbo have known before the lottery? Did someone tell him beforehand? Will Sam Cassell ever take over planet Earth? Will Anthony Davis's unibrow ever fly off? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. <laughs> Sorry guys, I got carried away. I'm just I'm just a huge Dragon Ball Z fan and with all the questions it just sounded appropriate, but that's besides the point. Anyways, you can see the twisted logic here. Basically, an intriguing team wins a lottery, creating interest, which leads to TV ratings down the road and boom conspiracy. Even though I'm not one of these theorists, I can't deny that this information does indeed look suspicious. Who knows? Maybe there's a bigger explanation to all of this.
<laughs> Next up is dirty referees. The vast majority of calls in the NBA are judgment calls. Fouls in the NBA aren't as black and white as touchdowns in football or fair and foul calls in baseball. In addition, there are only a few types of calls where it's even possible to use instant replay. While many want the league to expand its use of replay, it's simply not realistic to correct every moving screen, hand check, and illegal box out by going to the monitor. The fact that you can't absolutely say that the calls are 100% correct or incorrect lends itself to conspiracy theories. And some of the most frequent NBA conspiracies are based on the idea that the referees fix the outcomes of games by intentionally calling fouls on any given team. As I pointed it out before, all of these theories assume that the NBA is corrupt and motivated by TV ratings and money. So the common idea here is that the league rigs games so star players or popular teams win. For example, in game 6 of the 2002 Western Conference Finals, the Lakers were down 3-2 in the series against the Sacramento Kings. They shot 40 free throws, including 27 in the fourth quarter. If the Kings won, the playoffs were over and the NBA would miss out on one more game's worth of Doritos ads. But because the LA Lakers are a money-making franchise and the Sacramento Kings are, well, from Sacramento, one disgraced former referee claims that his associates just let the Lakers win. It's not just that one guy's word though. Apparently, there's even video evidence showing the refs calling dumb fouls for the Kings while ignoring stuff like Lakers superstar Kobe Bryant straight up elbowing Mike Bibby in the face. A moment of silence for Mike Bibby's jaw. Rewatching the game in 2008, the New York Times called it a masterclass in bad calls, missed calls, and missed calls. Oh, and apparently they're still doing this by the way. Remember that disgraced former NBA referee I was talking about? That's Tim Donaghy. He claims that the league had instructed its officials to favor the Brooklyn Nets over the Toronto Raptors in the opening round of the 2014 playoffs. In an interview with Sportsnet 590, Donaghy, who last officiated an NBA game in 2007, suggested that the league had an interest in a fixed outcome for the Nets Raptors team. According to Donaghy, Toronto was not not only going against the Brooklyn Nets, but going against the league office. He would go on to say that the Raptors were a very talented team and were much better than the Brooklyn Nets. Tim continued by saying that he would have picked Brooklyn to win. During the series, Tim claimed that the referees were to be more active to talk and respond to Nets coach Jason Kidd over Raptors coach Dwayne Casey. In his own words, Tim said, what they do is they actually send in a representative from the league office to sit down with the referees at an 11 o'clock meeting in the morning where they go over game film. They will show the referees what they want called, what they want them to concentrate on and what they feel needs to be called or let go in a series to avoid any problems. As a referee, you get paid an enormous amount of money as you advance in rounds. You're being graded in every way you're officiated and you're going to be graded on what they want you to call. So if they say Kyle Lowry is hand checking Darren Williams and we need that called, you're certainly going to call it. If you let something go, you're going to be dinged for missing a call. Donaghy claimed that the NBA rigged the manner in which the Nets Raptors games are officiated in order to secure a matchup in the next round that would generate better television ratings. He said, in this situation, Brooklyn would be put to an advantage. A Brooklyn Miami matchup would bring great TV ratings and that's what it's all about for the NBA and the league offices, bringing in as many dollars as they can. If you don't believe in what Tim says, then you might believe in what he did. In 2007, Donaghy resigned from the NBA in disgrace after an FBI investigation revealed that he fixed the outcomes of games that he officiated during the final two years of his career. He pled guilty and was sentenced to prison. Later, Donaghy's lawyers filed a court document which alleged the NBA officials had rigged game six of the 2002 Western Conference Finals between the Los Angeles Angeles Lakers and the Sacramento King. The same game many people believe was rigged to this day. There are a bunch of other smaller examples along these lines. Michael Jordan's push-off in the 1998 Finals, the four-point play in the 1999 Knicks Pacers series, the Lakers' miracle comeback against the Blazers in Game 7 of the 2000 Western Conference Finals, Dwayne Wade shooting 16 free throws per game in the 2006 NBA Finals, Jeff Van Gundy getting fined 100000 for saying referees were targeting Yao Ming in 2005 against the Mavericks, and there's much, much more. In any sport where there's a referee, you'll always get fans claiming that the refs are crooked. However, when a game is so clearly rigged in favor of one team that even political figure Ralph Nadar gets involved and demands an investigation, those whiners may be onto something. With all this evidence being presented, it's sort of hard not to agree with these guys. Finally, we have other random incidents. Aside from the more well-known topic discussions about how the NBA is rigged, there are many other small-time cases that help prove the conspiracy. An example of one is when NBA Commissioner David Stern pretty much admitted it's rigged. David Stern has been the NBA's commissioner for close to 30 years 
So if anyone knows how dirty the game really is, it's this guy. However, he's not likely to just go ahead and confess the truth, right? Actually, he already kind of did. In 2011, with a potential NBA lockout arriving, Stern held a closed door meeting with players union chief Billy Hunter and many of the league stars. Hunter claimed in the meeting that David Stern no longer had the influence he thought he did. Stern was pissed off by the statement and felt the need to respond to show his frustration. Stern told the room that he knows where the bodies are buried in the NBA. Snitches, I mean witnesses, quoted that he then went on to say he knew this because he had buried some of them himself. Realizing he had slipped up and said something he never meant, Stern quickly switched his response by saying, haha, I mean the babies. I know where the babies are buried. No, that's worse. Very strange if you ask me. Eventually, the lockout didn't kill the season and eight months later, Stern managed to block a massive trade for basketball reason. No other sport has a leader with such a conspiracy theory about him. David Stern is the reason NBA fans are right to treat every no call on LeBron James like it's nothing. Another odd yet recent incident that happened, almost similar to the Dikembe Mutombo one is when the NBA's Facebook page listed upcoming events and already had the Golden State Warriors playing the Cleveland Cavaliers in Game 1 of the NBA Finals. One problem, Golden State still had to beat the Oklahoma City Thunder in Game 7 of the Western Conference Finals for that matchup to even happen. So how could the NBA already post up the next matchup if the outcome of the first was never known? Supposedly what actually happened is someone at Ticketmaster messed up. According to the NBA, Ticketmaster controls the ticketing portion of the league's Facebook page and someone over there jumped the gun and mistakenly posted the inaccurate information. The mistake mistake was corrected but it wasn't wiped away quick enough for conspiracy theorists. Clearly it could have just been an oversight on behalf of the league's social media team but with a team as big as the Warriors and hailing from a bigger market than the Thunder, it was a big mistake. I could go on and on about all the theories and schemes that the NBA has done since it first began but no matter what happens in the NBA people will assume it is corrupt. A team with the best odds win like the Cavs did when they got LeBron? Rigged. Referees call dumb calls in an intense series and give the better team the win? Rigged. LeBron James somehow manages to fix his own hairline? Rigged. You can point to a lot of incidents as evidence of corruption, but the broader conspiracy that the NBA is centrally planned has no real evidence. Many people are ready to blame everyone in the NBA when it comes to it being rigged, but it all comes down to one person. Just kidding. No one person is to blame. Or is there? If you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, feel free to show some love by leaving a like and subscribing. Also, if you have any thoughts and or recommendations for future videos, feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. You guys should also follow me on Twitter and Instagram to get the latest updates and to keep in touch with me. I'll leave a link to both in my description box. Until next time, this has been another segment of NBA Insider. Thanks for watching.